Good day, and welcome to Barbaria Mid Coding Vlog in the forest. Check this out. Forest. Today we're gonna talk about Vim. How you can be more productive, more effective when writing, editing, changing, refactoring your code, but using the most awesome editor known to mankind, Vim. VI improved. Vim! Hello, Traveler. Welcome once more to the Barbarian Meets Coding Vlog. So, Vim, what is so awesome about an editor from the 1970s? Why would you want to use it in 2018? Well, I'll tell you. Because it's so good. Different things that make Vim awesome unlike any other editor that you may be using today. One of them is that it's completely keyword centric. You're not supposed to touch the mouse. You're just gonna control the complete editor, anything that you can do with it, with the keyword. It is completely designed for touch typists. So the idea is that you will have your hands, your hands, the idea is that you have your hands always resting on the home row, and from there you will be able to reach all commands you need to use. Uh, to run your editor. Another thing is that it is a model editor. You have a mode where you edit your code, you have a mode where you insert your code, you have a mode where you run different commands, and the good thing about it is that by having different modes, you don't need to come up with weird contortions with your fingers, Control alt shift command p to do something. You just change the mode and most of the most important commands you will be able to find from the commodity of the helm row. So you just have your hands on top of it, you need to change a word, you just type CW and that's how it works. Super simple, no weird combinations. At the core of Vim, you have all these uh, special operators, commands, motions. And a cool thing about Vim is that you can compose them all together to achieve different results. So imagine that you have uh, the change command that you type with C and then you have a motion like word. You can combine this operator with this motion to uh, achieve the result of changing a word. Then you learn a different motion. I can be uh, find the next character in a sentence. You already know a command that is changed. You can combine this command change with a new motion to achieve a different result. And with all these composing and uh, different commands and operators and motions, you will building up a vocabulary that you can then, you can use to perform new and more powerful tasks. And whenever you learn a new motion or a new operator, you can combine them with the ones that you previously knew. And so you will building this vocabulary and becoming more savvy at using them. So that's the awesome thing about the composability of commands. And finally, you have the idea of customizability and extensibility of the editor. This is not something that you can only do with Vim, but in Vim, it comes very embedded in the culture of Vim users. And you have this idea of you have your Vim configuration file that you go improving, uh, adding more stuff to it, uh, your own plugins. Everything is very in the culture of Vim which makes you learn how to customize your experience within Vim and make it tailored to uh, your type of development. All of these things make Vim a very special kind of editor. And I think that learning Vim will improve a lot uh, your productivity as a developer. Uh, and another cool thing about Vim is that you don't, you're not limited to using Vim to use Vim. You can use Vim in other editors. Uh, Vim is so good and it gives you such a productivity boost and it gives you such powers to control uh, an edit text that it's very common for other editors to provide plugins or layers with uh, that provide Vim like functionality within your editor of choice. For instance, I started using Beam within Visual Studio, then moved to Atom, then moved to Visual Studio Code, and I've always had a plugin uh, in either of these editors where I can, which I can rely on to use Vim. So, without further ado, let's look at Vim. Good, so here we are in the terminal, and I'm uh, just in my blog. My blog is a Gatsby uh, website. So I'm just here in the terminal, and I can start Vim, in this case, NeoVim, by just typing mvim.boom. 
This opens NeoBeam in this folder, and you can see this is a file manager. I can just open uh, an article that I've written recently. It's exploring Beam. And this is how it looks. You can see that how now I'm in the normal mode. As you can see there below, it says normal. And here I can use the motion keys within my home row keyboard to go down, up, right and left. So this is uh, some YAML on the top. And then we have some markdown there in the bottom with the article. So let's say that we want to do something that we typically do in programming that is changing the value of the strings. So let's change the title. How would I do that in Beam? So I can go down a couple of rows, uh, so two down, and then I can uh, go forward a word, and now I can say change inside quotes, and I can change the title. I can say discovering Beam. If I don't like the change, I can easily do it with the U. Let's say that I don't want to change the entire title and I only want, want to change the word. I can do that as well. I can do G, I can do C A W and I can change only the word. I can say discovering vein for great justice. Now let's say that I want to add a category to the blog. You can see three lines below, there's a list of categories, beam, a foreign beam. Let's say that I want to go there and add a new category. How would I do that with them? Again, I can go down uh, three rows, and now I can search for the opening brackets. I can do that with uh, F. So F, uh, lookups F, uh, searches for characters in line forward, and capital F, search backward. So I can do that, and now you can see how the cursor has moved here. I can do A for pen, and I can write uh, awesome beam. And now it's done. You can see how when I change a word or a pen or insert, I go from normal mode into insert mode, and that's where I can type text. So the homebrew no longer has a special meaning, it's just for writing characters. When I'm done, I type escape, or in my case, normally I use Ctrl C or JJ, because I have customized it, and I get back to normal mode where I can do more editing. Again, if I don't like my changes, I just type undo, 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 and now I'm back where I was in the beginning. Let's say that I want to change something that is much, much lower within the body of this article. And in the first paragraph, for instance, there's a lot of adjectives there, uh, like uh, uh, from how to live a fulfilling, purposeful, and thoughtful life, to how to refract with this line of code. Let's say that I want to remove one of those adjectives because it's, uh, there are just too many. You can just search for patterns, search for words with the forward slash. So say full, you can see how the game is showing me uh, more info there. To see what I'm searching for. When I'm done, I type next, type end for next, and now I have the cursor here at the top of this word. Now I can do delete a word, and you can see how that adjective has been deleted. Uh, let's say that I don't like this whole sentence, I can do delete a sentence, and the sentence is removed. I don't like this paragraph, delete a paragraph, and the paragraph is removed. I don't like the next two paragraphs, I can do delete two AP and I delete two paragraphs. So this is pretty cool how you can combine operators with motions to get things done. You can use this while writing prose like in this article or you can use it with code as well. So this is a small demonstration of uh, Beam and how cool it is to, to use uh, the different commands in conjunction with different motions to move around and change text at the speed of thought. Uh, imagine how you can use this uh, in your own work life uh, be it with Vim or be it outside of Vim. Vim is supported in a lot of other editors. Uh, let's see that. But instead of Vim, I'm going to open code. So now we're here in the same article in Visual Studio Code. You can see how my cursor is kind of special, and that's because we're in normal mode. And I'm using the same motions to go up and down and right and left. I can do the same things I did before, like here. I can go uh, the word change inside quotes and I'm changing uh, I can again go a couple of lines down find the next uh, square brackets add something exactly what I did in BIM I can do here in the comfortable the coziness of Visual Studio Code you often find that um, not everything within BIM is supported uh, in these other editors but there's a lot of uh, operators and motions and commands that you can use 
uh, to enhance your editing experience by adding Beam to your current workflow. Installing uh, Beam support in your Visual Studio Code is as easy as going to extensions, uh, searching for Beam, and then you will see that the first hit is the one that you want, VS Code Beam, with 4 million downloads, this is the one that you want. If you have a package manager in, the, in your editor of choice, you will probably be able to find a similar plugin just by searching for Beam. And that's it. I hope you have enjoyed this very short introduction to Beam. I'll see you soon in the next episode of the series. Take care. Savvy. So be here. Go Beam. It's so. <laughs>